Going live again. Do to do to do. And number fifty-nine after show expense. Not the expense, I guess would definitely be more correct. Okay, continue. And we're back. A little bit of mumbling from me at the beginning as I was typing in the title. We're back to do the after show. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. We're talking about The Expanse! New sci-fi series, and God, doesn't it look good? It really it does. Looks fantastic. Yeah. It's, uh... I think, honestly, I have to say, guys, as much as I hate to admit it, I think sci-fi might finally be turning over a new leaf. Um, yeah, giving us Dark Matter, then Killjoys, and now The Expanse, and they all look absolutely fantastic. Let's give it a couple of years and see if they last more than the standard five seasons. Hey, five seasons is actually a very good length for any show. I know, but I want 10, 20, 30, 70. Okay, I wouldn't expect sci-fi to have any show that goes longer than, you know, five five of the most. It's just not a big budget network. Yeah, well, that's their own damn fault. Now, if I'm, I'm excited to see how they do with Childhood's End. You, you know why they have shifted back to sci-fi, don't you? Because Tell me. Uh, somebody finally tapped him on the shoulder and said, oh, by the way, your name is Sci-Fi. No. Might be good to have some science fiction. Their subscriber rating has dropped by almost 40% since has the rebrand. Really? And Aww. so... There's that they're bleeding that many people. They're trying to sort of claw some back. The big question at the moment is: it's bleeding so much that they've had to close down Sci-Fi Australia and a few other overseas Sci-Fi channels to try and make up for lost money. So yeah, all sorts of stuff sort of all sorts of stuff sort of been going down. So they're currently scrambling to make ba- make it back. And there's I think there's a new head, and yeah, it's who knows if it's going to be. Too little, Wait, too late. the head of the network changed? What? Or, I think the, per- the person in charge of organizing what shows is are coming has changed. Um, okay. All I know is that somebody came out and apologized for screwing up. Yeah. So, that if that doesn't say, the, sinking the, ship, the, bailing yeah. water, please save us, I don't know what does. So, yeah. Anyway. The Expanse. What do we think? I thought it was spectacular. Yeah, I... I thought it was pretty good. I actually really enjoyed it. Yeah, I thought it was good. I watched Still it. confuses how sex and space works, but... Well, considering NASA's already developing the technology to allow us to do that... Not joking. Um, and the way they're doing it is effectively a really bizarre equivalent of... Um, combination of Velcro and elastic. Which... Sounds so much worse than what it really is. <laughs> Sounds like a bad Fifty Shades of Cream. <laughs> yeah, it really does. Um, so yeah. But no, everything like good, good cast, really good oh, yeah. cast factors. Did you see um, the dude who played Death in Supernatural? Yeah, that was funny. And I'm loving having cast in the in the cast there. Yeah. But yeah, no. Hopefully, we're, we're, hopefully we're we can really... get him on the show. Mm. That'd be really cool. It's really solid, like good solid writing, good solid plot, and everything. Yeah, definitely good, good setup. And the effects, the effects re- looked really good as well. The effects were amazing. I can mm. only imagine how expensive that must be. Yeah. War, yeah. war between Earth. Uh, effectively, what it feels like is they're setting up for a war between Mars and Earth. And the and with the asteroid belt caught in the middle, yeah. Yeah, with the technically the asteroid belt's around the outside, but yeah. It's, I know what well, you mean. But I mean, you know what I mean, cut in the middle of the yeah, conflict. exactly. Yes. And, but you know um, what I, I found it interesting that Mars was the one initiating stuff, because in most of the sci-fi you go and see out there, like... It's um, always Earth. It's always Earth, yes, using the heavy hand of the military. You know, Babylon 5, it was Earth trying to suppress the Mars colonies. It's, it's and, like yeah. that in all the Gundams. It's always Earth yeah. tries to suppress everything and yeah. be like, and, oh, I'm the king of everything. Well, in this yeah, case, that, 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 but that's the same in this. Earth has control. It says at the very beginning that they're waiting for Mars to have enough strength to wrestle control of the asteroid belt from Earth. So Earth is still the superpower. And yeah, but while Mars, Mars is, is the one growing in conflict. Yeah, Mars is growing in strength and provoking conflict. 
but I think Mars's equivalent tactics are almost, and I hate to make the comparison, please forgive me, everybody, it's almost ISIS level, where they're trying oh, to provoke make, a larger... America. No, <laughs> they're trying to make the larger force of America, or Earth in this case, go to war on a battlefield that it is ill-equipped to cover all of its sides on. And Mars would presumably, being a less inhabitable planet, um, have a smaller military force, and as such, the only way to win in a war against a massively superior military force is guerrilla-style tactics. So, um, if and that's sort of what they're doing. They seem to be leading one ship here, one ship there, and sort of destroying them one at a time. But if they've got stealth tech to their advantage... That oh, yeah. is big. But it depends. Is it military-grade stealth or civilian-grade stealth? Because it's definitely civilian-grade cloaking, but will that same cloaking work on a military vessel? That's the question. What I thought was interesting and that surprised me was that they basically eliminated 90% of the initial cast. Yeah. Like, I did not expect that to happen at all. Well, they just wrecked that original ship. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but it had, and like, they established, they actually spent a little time establishing a bunch of those characters, and then they just wiped most of them out. Yeah. What, three, what are the three left? Yeah, three or four on the little pod. I think, what, Cass, uh, his character, um, was it the, was one of them the XO? Like the, yeah. the, um, yeah, the Temp XO, who I guess now is captain technically of the little ship. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like it how they said, we'll go, if they'd locked onto us, let's cut around the asteroid and then we'll use the pathfinding to sort of trick it into smashing into the asteroid and then it swings around them and keeps going and they're like, wait. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> if, if, if this was something like this, um, because of the technology level they're at, they don't have FTL. They're pure sublight at the moment. At least as they've demonstrated it so far, they're pure sublight. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I mean, they dump wouldn't everything. anything more. Dump everything and burn. Get the hell out of here. And um, they just didn't have the time to respond. The missiles were on them too quick, and they were both nukes, and they're gone. Oh, and did you guys catch the uh, the very very early on establishment of just how dangerous it is out there? Oh yeah. I mean, when the ice just yeah, they're just sitting there chatting. The ice breaks and rips off the guy's arm. Yeah. Like on, dang. On the, on the plus side, he doesn't have to worry about his arm anymore. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have to worry about his job either. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he's pretty much dead. He's so pretty sure he's on that ship. Somebody, so is everybody else on that ship. Yeah. So, what do we think of the ship design? So I thought that looked really cool. I love it. <laughs> Until yeah. it got blown up. Oh, yeah, it reminded <laughs> me very much of the original Starship Troopers movies. Yeah. Um, In a weird yeah. kind of way. The one thing that. I did, the one thing I did like about it was when they flipped the ship to to tr- make the burn to go after the other ship, that that showed me that they took the time to try and get the the real science part of it right. Yeah, which yep, which I really liked. Um, I got a quite I got a when I was watching the extension when they blew up the ship with that missile. I don't know, it just, it just, it didn't seem like a normal missile to me. It was a nuke. Ah. It see, was a nuke, f- which was why it was a spherical explosion. Ah, see, when I first saw it, I was thinking, is it like a dark matter torpedo, like, missile or something? Because everything just went, every- it was like, but no, nuke makes more sense now. Yeah, yeah. And they actually got the explosion right, too. There wasn't a, sort of, a dedicated planar <laughs> blast wave. It was a massive spherical explosion, which is yeah. what it's like in space. Um, oh, no, that, that effect looked really awesome as well. Yeah. I was just like, oh, you guys are gone. And they, they also did really good with the, sort of the, as Michael said, the science side of stuff, where they had, after the explosion, you could actually see the debris was keeping its track. Yeah. Now, we don't know what's going to happen to the little pod. It's not sort of revealed what's going to happen to him, if they're going to be trapped there, or if this stealth vessel's going to take them out, or what's going to happen. Did you well, know what's take them out. I they saw have a... I saw a end of at the end of that they showed her like a here's what's going to happen next sort of thing for like the rest of the season. Yeah, uh, I intentionally didn't watch that. Oh, I did. Spoiler. 
Oh, Let's not... give him a spoiler alert. <laughs> well, yeah. to... uh, basically, they're just gonna catch by catch him by the mask. Yeah. The yeah. Really, really cool thing. That's about it, really. Is Sci-Fi oh, okay. actually reveal release this, not on their network, but on Facebook first? Yeah, this is yeah. a digital drop that they did. Yeah. That, that was, was really great. That was very very interesting sort of tactic from their point of view. Like. A lot of, nowadays it is, and a couple of networks have actually come out and said this, including the guys who do Game of Thrones, and they've said the way they do ratings now isn't based on the old rating system. No. The way they do ratings now is by looking at the torrents. The yeah, more, Nielsen has Nielsen recently adapted to doing that. Yeah, the more people that are torrenting a an episode, any given episode, that means the more people want to watch it. Now, the amount of people torrenting it might be one percent of one percent of one percent. But it is still a better guide than the actual TV ratings. I think they're doing a mixture of both, though. Oh yeah, they're doing a mixture of both. But okay, yeah, yeah, it's a more accurate sort of, it's a more accurate yeah, guide sort of over a large variety of shows. Exactly. So. Yeah. At least it's now taking into account online viewership. Yeah. Exactly. And so. I think honestly, releasing this pilot episode online first was spectacular for them. In that, you know, I mean. You can get as much advertisement as you want on you know on TV and everything, but it's still not going to hit everybody because you have to be on there at certain times. Exactly. You have a, you have a sponsored post on Facebook with a page of some millions of people following the show, channel. You're going to get a lot more attention, especially for the whole first episode. Exactly. And they're sort of playing on the viral marketing scheme side of things, where they sort of hoped everyone would share it, and a lot of people did. So, yeah, definitely. If you're out there and you haven't watched the Expanse, look it up. To me, it feels like it's going to be maybe Battlestar Galactica level. Oh, awesome. that's 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 a, that's a, that's that's a big call. A yeah, that's a big call. But it definitely it's more serious than a Stargate series. Oh, most certainly. However, it's you know, way darker. Now, whether or not it gets that quality, I don't know. People have been trying to remake Battlestar Galactica esque shows ever since it went off the air. Yeah, and. I Almost know. everyone has failed. I know, but it's got that feel to it. It's got the potential. Very few shows, even if they try and do it, they just don't have the potential to do it. This does. This has the potential to sort of play both sides against the middle. And that's what I'm really sort of curious about. I'm less curious about the war and the conflict than I am about the people and how they sort of live their day-to-day -day lives in these incredible scenarios like at one point there's a dude who's not used to earth gravity or um mars gravity i don't know where the hell he is but he's used to low g and they've actually pinned him on a wall and because he's not used to the higher g he's actually getting crushed to death while being pinned up against a wall under his own weight and it's like wow that really takes into effect the difference between the gravity on series the gravity on Mars and the gravity on Earth. They've also they also talk about lunar colonies, so um, it's sort of a fair assumption that they would have colonies on the the moon. Well, the technically captured asteroids around Mars. Um, Phobos and Phoebus. Yes. Yeah. Phoebes or something. Yes. Yeah, something like that. Phobos uh, and Phobos, Fe Fe something like that. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, the, the, like that. yeah. The, the two. Effectively, they're asteroids that Mars captured, and they're now technically moons because of they orbit Mars. Um, but they are very, 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 very slowly falling to the surface. Um, and so we know there's definitely people on Earth, there's definitely people on the moon, there's definitely people on Mars, and there's definitely people working the asteroid belt. There's also specific trade routes and other plotted courses based on other things we've learned. So yeah, it definitely looks like it's going to be really, really interesting. Um, and I'm very curious to see where it goes. But, okay. How about this? Technology rating. How would you rate them technology-wise? I would rate them... If Battlestar Galactica didn't have FTL capabilities, I would rate them um, just a little bit before that. I would kind of put a mix between BSG and Babylon 5. Yeah. Actually, yeah, Babylon 5 would yeah. be probably closer. Babylon 5 with projectile weapons and no FTL. 
I feel like this is kind of going to be a show, very much a crossover of those two if it goes well. Yeah. Because they, it, like you said, it has a lot more general kind of life to it. It looks like than it is Babylon or Battlestar Galactica, where they're like focusing the main characters always and you know on a specific no. goal. Whereas Babylon Five is a more daily kind of thing. Exactly. Um, but just, it also depends on what sort of direction they're going to take the show. It's definitely not episodic. It's definitely going to be telling a long sort of story. Well, so. it, it's based off a series of books. So that's the other thing about the show that makes me really hopeful about it is that they have source material that we know is popular. It's a very successful series of books, which means that it is more likely than an original series you know, yeah. that sci-fi just yeah, yeah. came up with to succeed. Exactly. So maybe maybe a better way of rating it would be Babylon 5 meets Battlestar Galactica meets almost Game of Thrones. Based on the number of characters they killed in the first episode. That could be true. <laughs> but I mean, like, Andromeda killed off a ton of characters in the first episode as well. Yeah, fair point. So we gotta see, really, gotta give it like two or three episodes to oh, see yeah. how many characters they kill off on a daily basis. Exactly. Um, so... Yeah, definitely looking forward to that. Mm. Now, really quickly, what would we rate? I, I, I love to do the rate things. Rating things is fun. Out of ten, we've got a couple of two two minutes or so left. Out of ten, what would you give it? For the premiere, I'd give it an eight out of ten. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd agree. Yeah, I'd go. Based on what I've seen, yeah, eight would be fair. The only reason I wouldn't give it higher is because it it was a little bit much to take in for the first episode. Yeah. Like, with no background, you go in, and even with a little bit of background that I've had, you really taking in all of that at once, it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely feels like you're diving into an incredibly filled out universe. Which can be great, of course. Exactly. Uh, anyway, um, definitely looking forward to more. Definitely looking forward to more. Gotta stop repeating myself, but I'm looking forward to more. I want <laughs> more of it. When Why? when does it start on when does it start on TV again? It's already started. No no no. This was This uh, was a pre release. It doesn't start till December. Okay. Next week or the week after I think it's said. Yeah. Okay. I, th- I think it's so, two weeks. Well yeah, they're gonna be starting with this episode though. Yeah. So probably so we'll after Christmas for more. But anyway, so really quickly, which one, have any of you guys, since we've only got about two or three minutes left, who watched Doctor Who? <laughs> oh, yes. God, that was Sorry. a brilliant episode. It really was. Yeah. Like, I was nervous when they told us there was only going to be the Doctor and that was the only only actual build character. And, but it turned out absolutely beautiful. Yeah. It just and we finally us. worked out what the conf- what the confession disc was. Oh, Yeah. That, that threw me. I was like, oh, that's exactly. interesting. Same here. But doesn't that mean... But the thing is, that's not supposed to open until he's about to die. Well, that's the point. He was effectively so, dead. He died repetitively. Okay. Alright, I guess that makes sense. I didn't think about that. He, he died every couple of... Every what? Would have been That's almost. true. That's very true. That's how they got around doing that. Yeah. Can't wait for the finale. <laughs> Gallifrey, yeah, guys. It's gonna Gallifrey. be hell to pay. Oh, yeah. And this is bringing Gal... Assuming... Unless... I wonder if Moffat's gonna, like, do something in this finale to lock Gallifrey back up again. <laughs> well, this ties in with the 50th, so... Yeah. This is, this is a full circle from the 50th. Because remember, we see you see like br- the the br- the only glimpse you see of, of Capaldi's Doctor in the fiftieth is the eye, so we know he's there. Yeah, but this one in this one, I don't think this is the I don't think this episode's gonna show that again. Well, it's, it's, it's meant like to tie. It's meant to tie in with the fiftieth. Yeah. Well, of course, because it's wrapping it all up. So, yeah. All right, anyway, that's it done for the after show. We don't like to let the after show run too long. Um. We'll catch you guys next week, where we will have all sorts of stuff to talk about. I have no idea what yet. All I'm, right. I'm playing that far ahead, okay, guys. I'm I'm playing that far ahead. The, I just got a sneaky suspicion something awesome is going to happen this week, and 
we can talk about it next week. Let's call it the force. The force is telling me. Yeah. Catch you later. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, Bye everyone.